Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to the course code ENG455, lecture number 10. Today we are again going to start with morphology that we started in our previous lecture. If you remember, we are uh, studying the levels of language at, and at the moment we are at third level of language uh, that is morphology. So with a morphology, we have studied uh, some uh, of the aspects in previous week, which were those? Yes, previously we have studied uh, what morphology is. Uh, morphology is uh, a branch of knowledge in which we study the science of words or something like morphemes. Then we uh, came up uh, what word is because uh, we use a lot of words in our language without knowing what words are and with respect to word we uh, considered uh, different definitions of word word like um, the orthographical definitions and uh, semantic definitions and phonological definition and syntactic definition and finally we found a uh, different problems with different definitions and uh, and come back and reached to our uh, to final conclusion there where that a uh, word is something uh, which, uh, uh, with which is a single entity with respect to its syntact uh, syntactic uh, definition having some meaning as well. So after the word, uh, we started with uh, morphemes because morphology is basically uh, uh, concerned with morphemes uh, rather than words. Morphemes, what are morphemes? Morphemes are the smallest uh, unit, the minimal unit uh, of uh, syntactical and semantic uh, functions. But then again, we related morphemes, concept of morphemes with words, that what is the relationship between words and morphemes. Words are the larger units, a word and inside the words we can have morphemes with and both have a hierarchical relationship. For example, word um, talkative is a single word but inside this word there are two morphemes talk and tiv. So this way we can, word can be comprised of morphemes and morphemes they are the smaller, uh, they are smaller than the words. After this relationship we went to phonemes and morphemes relationships phonemes they are the smallest um, meaningful uh, sounds uh, units and whereas morphemes are with respect to morphology and what uh, we studied that morphemes they are actually comprised of phonemes morphemes they are made up of phoneme, phonemic units uh, uh, for example the word cat comprised of three phonemes uh, ka a and a and ta so this way the morphemes they are made up of uh, phonemes they are bigger than morphemes and finally we discussed the relationship between morphemes and lexemes a new terminology that is quite in nowadays lexemes something more even bigger than the word so at the top we had uh, lexemes lexemes is is a single word or all the word that are related together they are they are put they are treated under one single lexeme entity for example the word is a uh, forgive but now forgive I can make a uh, forgiveness uh, forgiving forgave so these uh, different words and so all these combinations they are treated as one under one lexeme entity that is forgive and out of that and all forgave forgave forgiven forgiveness forgiving these stand within under one lex lexeme entity but inside that lexemes all of these they are treated individually as words forgive is one word forgiveness is another word forgiving is another word so this way inside lexemes we have words and inside and words they are further made up of morphemes like forgive is a single morpheme but forgiveness is made up of two morphemes forgive and ness forgiving made up of two morphemes forgive ing so this way words they are made up of morphemes they are bigger than morphemes and morphemes they are the smallest minimal unit of syntactic and semantic functions now this week what we are going to do further with uh, morphology or further with morphemes
after that we will study item and arrangement morphological analysis um, and its uh, drawbacks and then uh, we will move toward the concepts of morphs and allomorphs and finally we will uh, will we'll end with uh, aspects of morphology so today we are going to start our lecture with the types of morphemes now morphemes once again what is morpheme the smallest or minimal unit of semantic and syntactic function now this morpheme can be of two types free morphemes and bound morphemes free morphemes that can occur on their own and they are free that's why they are they have been given the name free because they exist freely and they can uh, they can occur independently and as independent unit they give they have meaning they convey a certain meaning so they are known as free morphemes the basic or core morphemes in such cases is referred to as stem root or base sometimes these uh, free morphemes we call them as root morphemes or base morphemes and further we have stem morphemes then bound morpheme bound morphemes that cannot exist independently yes bound as the name expresses which are bound which are which cannot exist independently which are not free and because when they are isolated in isolation they do not have any meaning so to get meaning they are always combined with the free morphemes so this way bound morphemes they are the morphemes which are which exist in relation with the free morphemes and sometimes these bound morphemes they are also known as add-ons or affixes so free morphemes or uh, root morphemes or base morphemes and bound morphemes which are known as uh, affixes or uh, uh, sometimes add-ons now as the figure makes it clear that word mo the word is tourist and tourist word is made up of three morphemes tourist and s, uh, and s. now tour the word tour it has a meaning yes we know i'm going to have a tour they have tour planning so um, tour word is actually a free morpheme because the word it, this word can exist independently it has a relationship with other word with other morpheme but it can exist independently so it is a free morpheme but look at the second morpheme ist now ist is a morpheme which independently does not have any meaning we know we use this morpheme to uh, to uh, sh show a person who does something for example biologist uh, chemist or tourist so they, they they exist in relation with free morphemes they have meanings but they have meanings in relation with free morpheme so such morpheme because they do not exist independently or independently they don't have any meaning so they is stays a bound morpheme similarly as in independent uh, level uh, we don't have any meaning for s but with respect to the, to the word tourist this s is actually uh, showing the plural uh, plural for the word tourist tourist is singular tourist is plural so s is with uh, is existing in relation to the other morphemes so independently does not have any meaning but in 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 combination with uh, free morphemes they have meaning so once again the sa that is making plural is a bound morpheme look at another example again truthfulness truthfulness a single word now made up of three morphemes truth full and ness look at the first morpheme that is truth yes an independent morpheme because we know what is meant by truth it can exist in isolation it can have its own meaning so this is a free morpheme because it can exist freely now look at the second morpheme that is full f u double l that is something else that full the yes that has a meaning but f u l a single f full it does not have any meaning we can say truthful we can say the delightful that it 
always and always has a meaning with uh, in relation to free morpheme and in isolation it does not have any meaning and it does not exist freely because when I say for FUL full then I don't have any meaning I do I'm not saying anything I'm not expressing any meaning so this way full can exist in relation with free morpheme but for full cannot exist independently so it is a bound morpheme now look at the third morpheme for the word truthfulness ness once again uh, it exists in relation with truthfulness but uh, in isolation ness does not have any meaning do you have any meaning for the word ness no definitely no we know that for example we can use ness with forgiveness so ness is always exist uh, in relation with free morpheme it does not have its meaning on its own so ness is a bound morpheme now look at another example unknowingly unknowingly a complete word made up of four morphemes un, no, ing and li four morphemes are there we will start with the first morpheme that is un now un is a bound morpheme why because un in isolation does not have any meaning un has always yes we know that it always comes with the nouns with the words uh, or with attributes to make their meanings negative for example uneducated unethical similarly unknowingly but but un in isolation does not convey in any meaning if I say un do you get any meaning no so un has meaning in relation to free morphemes so un is a bound morpheme now look at the second morpheme that is no now no we know that this is a free morpheme because for the word no we have a meaning yes we have meaning we uh, know that what word is this word is I know I know him so no is a free morpheme because it has its meaning it's a, it can exist in isolation now look at the third morpheme ing yes we use it with lot of words I am playing I am singing I am eating I am dancing I am uh, it's raining um, I, I, I've seen a cartoon on the internet which the, the person says yes our whole life is revolving around things all the times we are doing things I am playing I'm singing I'm eating I'm watching so ing is very really important um, uh, morpheme in our life but at the same time ing does not have its, its any meaning on its own it, it 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 is always connected with the free morpheme to give a meaning so ing is a bound morpheme similarly the last morpheme that is li again delightfully ethically strangely happily a lot of words with li endings and we know that when they, this li is coming what the meaning of that word changes but as independent unit the word li does not have any meaning not talking about Urdu li, many kitab li. I'm talking about this English L Y li, which does not have any meaning in isolation. It always adds some meanings when it comes with the free morpheme. So li is also a bound morpheme. So unknowingly comprised of four morphemes, which of, uh, out of which one is free and three are bound morphemes. Can you um, tell me any examples, any further examples having free and bound morphemes? Yes think about them yes write down on your copies and yes and then divide them into free and bound morphemes yes this activity will help you a lot to understand what free morphemes are and what bound morphemes are now once again we have studied two types of morphemes free and bound free morphemes that can occur on their own like and they are the root words usually happy change select green house they are all uh, free morphemes and bound morphemes can occur only if they are attached to other morphemes for example if fixes like un ness able un uneducated unethical ness forgiveness able unable d de deceive uh, deprived ive uh, generative er uh, sweeter 
so this way they are added with the free morphemes to get a meanings so two types of morphemes free and bound morphemes now I would like to further explain these morphemes these two types of morphemes because they have different names and different concepts are uh, different ideas are related to them now the first free morphemes they are also known as the root morphemes or the sometimes root words and bound morphemes they are known as affixes now in next uh, slides I will explain them free morphemes I would like to start with free morphemes from roots and stem side here yeah. what are roots and what are stems by roots I also means the base forms a root is a lexical content morpheme that cannot be analyzed into smaller parts so according to this definition a root is a meaningful unit which cannot be further divided so identification mark is that it cannot be further divided for example read in the word if a reread is a word then in reread read is a root word because it cannot it is a it has a meaning and it cannot be further divided to get a meaning similarly ling and linguist so linguist ling is a root morpheme or and ist is a combined with it to make a word linguist similarly paint and painter painter is a word paint is a single morpheme painter is a word combined of two made up of two morphemes paint and are but out of that two words I can only say paint is a free root morpheme because it has certain meanings it has a lexical content as well as it cannot be divided into smaller parts if I divide paint word into different uh, smaller parts like P A and I N T so they, the they, that parts become uh, meaningless P A does not have any meaning I N T does not have any meaning so together paint has uh, has having a lexical content and it it cannot be further divided E R on the other hand it is it cannot be called a root called a root because once num at first place it is a bound morpheme adding meaning to free morpheme at second place ER it does not if I separate it from the word paint then ER in isolation does not have any lexical content so the roots they have always lexical content and when a root word is combined with an affix it forms a stem so you should be clear what is the difference between a root and a stem a root is a single meaningful part and root plus affix makes a stem for example believe word is a root and with believe word if I add able then able is an affix or a suffix you call it usually so believable is a stem word similarly system is a root word one isolated mm, word having lexical content having meaning but if I with word uh, system with morpheme system if I add attic a suffix systematic now the word systematic is a stem word so mm, you should be clear that there is a difference between a root and stem words that root is the is the base word and out of that stem words emerges that stem word they are actually made up of root words root words plus use any kind of affixes either prefixes or suffixes they would be transformed into stem words for example if I take forgive as a root base word so out of that forgive a root word or base word I can have so many stem words like forgiveness forgive forgiven uh, forgiving so all these are stem words similarly truth is if I take truth as a root or base word then uh, truthful truthfulness uh, uh, truthfully so these these all are, uh, words are stem words so uh, you need to be clear what the root and stem words are while dealing with the idea of morphemes now I have 
beyond the English language, I have taken the examples for root and stems for Semitic, Semitic languages. Semitic languages, which are uh, mean uh, usually Hebrew and Arabic, Arabic of uh, whether it is uh, Egyptian Arabic or it is Arabic of Saudi Arabia or it is uh, Bahraini Arabic, whatever I mean Arabic language on the whole, they they are known as Semitic languages. So oh, uh, these these languages, these Semitic languages, they have a unique morphological system mean with this idea of stem and root it is different for English language and it is different for Semitic languages now what happens in these Semitic languages that nouns and verbs are built on foundation of three consonants and and one derives the related words by varying the pattern of vowels and syllables you have a combination of three consonant sounds and you can out and by combining that three consonant sound you can have one um, root word but if you want to make the stem words what you have to add are the vowels and syllables so the Semitic, lang uh, Semitic languages they have a very different structure from the English language. Now I have taken an example from Egyptian Ara Arabic. E in Egyptian Arabic, the word, uh, the three consonants and kataba, they are combined to have one word that is katab, and katab, k t b katab, that is uh, that is meant that is stands for a verb write. Now in in these three consonants, different vowels and syllables are added to make uh, new words. Like uh, look at the first uh, first one. Like over here, I have this katab. Now, katab, they would say katab for the word, uh, to show an verb, that means he wrote. Now, what is an added over here? Two vowels. This vowel and this vowel, these two vowels are added to make another verb, he wrote. Now, look at the second, katib. Now, katib. This com two vowel sounds are added over here and one vowel sound over here to make it a noun that is writer. Kat katib is a writer, is a noun. Look at the third word that is kitab. Now kitab vowel e sound is there and again a combination of two vowel sound uh, is there. Kitab. So that means a book that is once again a noun. And, la and look at the last words, kutub. Now, two vowel sound, u and u. These two vowel sounds are added to make kutub, which means books. The plural for kitab. The plural for word book and books is actually kitab and kutub. So this way in Arabic languages, they have a different morphological structure because they have consonants as their basis and they make use of vowels and syllables to form the new words. So, so we can say that, that in, in, in these languages, this idea of root and stem words, it is quite different than from the English language. Now, uh, bound morpheme. The bound morphemes, they are also known as affixes. Now, bound morphemes or affixes are always part of other words and do not uh, stand alone I mean they do not exist independently rather they are always the part of the other words and and, and as in uh, students of English language you have the ideas what what the affixes are so these affixes they have the further categories like uh, prefixes they have suffixes and then they have infixes and circumfixes with respect to English language, prefixes and suffixes are two categories of affix. But these uh, infixes and uh, circumfixes, uh, these are mean not particular to English language, but they are particular to some languages of the world. So, mm, mean they are found in the uh, few languages of the world. So, on the whole, we do not have two types of uh, fixes, rather we have four types of fixes. But with respect to English language, once again, I should uh, make you understand that with respect to English language, there are only and only two types of fixes, prefixes and suffixes. But with respect to the whole, ling uh, whole spectrum of the languages of the world, there are four types of suffixes, uh, of fixes that are prefixes, uh, suffixes, uh, infixes, and circumfixes.
So uh, now we will study in detail uh, what these bound morpheme or affixes and their different type. I will start with the prefixes, a very common idea um, in English language or grammar. Affixes that precede the stem are prefixes. Mean if you take the root or base word and and the fixes that that are before these root or base words, they are known as prefixes. The pre word is taken from the word precede because they precede the main uh, word. So this way, for example, rewrite. Now, write is the root word and re is a prefix because it is existing before the uh, root or stem word. Similarly, illegal. Now legal is the base word or root word and ill is a prefix because it is preceding the main word that is legal. So ill is a prefix. Similarly uneducated. Now educated is a main word and, uh, and un is coming before educated preceding the main word educated. So un is a prefix. Bipolar polar the main word and by preceding the main word so by is a prefix so any type of affix that precedes the base root stem word or that uh, that uh, exist before the main morpheme these kind of affixes they are known as prefixes and we have a lot of lot of example of prefixes in english language like uh, unethical, uh, immoral, immortal, and unsystematic, unbelievable, unknowingly. We have a lot of lot of prefixes that we use with respect to in English language as prefixes. And uh, in, if, if we talk about general languages in Urdu, we have also prefixes as sabke. For example, pasand is the main word, but we can add na, na pasand. Then na pasand, na is a prefix. Similarly, uh, dhyanatdar and um, baddhyanat. Now, uh, baddhyanati, sorry. So, baddhyanati, the bad word is a prefix because it is existing before the main uh, word that is dhyanati. dhyanati or dhyanati so bad is a uh, prefix so we have a lot of uh, these these prefixes in urdu they are known as sabke so in almost in all languages of the world we have prefixes the uh, the the fixes that exist before the main word now the second category of affixes is of suffixes now suffixes those affixes that follow the stem that follow the root word, that follow the base word, that follow the stem word, they are known as suffixes because they exist after the main word. For example, plate. Now, play is a main word, and ed the it is an affix, but it is coming after the main word, so it is a suffix. Similarly, player. Now, play is the main word, er affix coming after the main word, so it is a again suffix older old main word er coming after the old so it is a suffix similarly knitting now knit is a word action that is a main stem root word and ing is a, a, a affix that is coming after the main word so it is a suffix in urdu language we also have uh, suffixes as lake for, uh, when we add something at the end of the main word to make a, uh, to make a words so the, they, these lakes they are known as they are actually the suffixes um, uh, for example uh, ima, uh, uh, dhyanat and dhyanat dhar so dhar is a suffix or lahka so this way in different languages of the world we have this idea of suffixes as well as prefixes now there are another, there are other two types of affixes which are uh, not uh, mean common for english language but they are common to to some languages of the world these are these are the ideas of infixes and circumfixes now infixes Infixes are morphemes that can th that are inserted within another form. Mean there are two already forms, and inside that, if you insert, because prefix that that is before a word, 
and a suffix that is after a word. But sometimes some types of morpheme they are inserted inside the word. So such type of morpheme they are known as infixes. English language it mean mean it does not have really that much variety of these infixes. Um, uh, few examples are available. Uh, for example, if you look at the word, this unbelievable uh, unbelievable is a word is a made up of different morphemes. But uh, then un sometimes some I mean rarely we we have a word like unaffing believable. So this way unaffing believable affing is coming in between a prefix and a main word. So this way we are adding something inside the word. So this is an infix. Though it is uh, not common in English language, but in some languages of the world, these infixes, they are very much common. Now I have given you an example. If you look over there, Bontoc. Bontoc is a language that is spoken in Philippines. In that, this language, the infixes, they are quite uh, common. Now, if you look at these, they have the nouns, adjectives, and how they make verbs out of them. Like now, for the first word, that is a ficus. Now, ficus, which means strong. Now, in ficus, this is the stem word, and in this ficus, they add different mean um, uh, suffix uh, affixes. Like, if you look at this, ficus, f is there and ikaz is there and in between the word there is insertion of this um fumikas now fumikas to be strong so by adding this affix inside the word they make the change noun or adjective into a verb and because they are adding these uh, affixes inside the word so these these are infixes now look at another example killed now killer they, they they have the they for the red color they have a word killed now killed is the main word now inside this killed word if you look at this um this combination is added cumulate now cumulate this insertion is there and with the help of this insertion they get the verb to be read to make something read they would call it cumulate now once again the affix it is added in between the word there is another like, example like fusul now fusul is the word they use for the enemy now inside this word single word fusul they add um fumusul once again insertion of affix inside a word to make a to make an a noun or adjective a, as a verb so what now it would be a verb fumusul which means to be an enemy so this way they have infixes to transform one category into another category and this is quite different from prefixes and suffixes. Next we have a fourth category that is circumfixes uh, once again uh, not popular in English language uh, not popular in all languages but rather found in few languages of the world. So what are the circumfixes? Circumfixes are actually the morphemes that can be attached to a base morpheme both initially and finally. Mean uh, strangely, they, they, these morphemes they they uh, they exist at initial position as well as at the final or the um, last position to make a new word. And these circumfixes they are found in some languages of the world and one in example is a language of Muscogean. Muscogean is a language that is spoken in Oklahoma and uh, what happens that in this language if they have to make a negative out of affirmative they make use of circumfixes mean they add something at the initial position and at the and the final position as well so this way they make use of circumfixes now look at these examples on the board yes now if the affirmative sentence is chokuma now chokuma means he is good but if you want to transform this affirmative into negative they would say ik ik chokuma ik chokumo now then ik chokumo they are adding two things one ik at the beginning place and o at the final place and then they are making a negative out of it ik chokumo means he isn't good 
Now look at the example Lakana. Now look at the second example Lakana. Now Lakana means it is yellow. Now Lakana then when they have to make it affirmative into negative what they add they would add two things at initial and final position like if you see ek laknau now ek at the beginning place or at the last place by adding at initial and uh, the final positions these morphemes they uh, make our negative out of affirmative so ek laknau means it is it isn't yellow similarly pali now Pali means it is hot, an affirmative sentence. But to make a negative out of this affirmative, they would say ik palo. Now ik and o, two morphemes are added to make a negative. That it ik palo means it isn't hot. So this way, they, they, these some languages, they, uh, they have a certain structures where they use mean two morphemes at um, initial and final position to, to change it. And such type of morphemes, they are known as circumfixes, mean they are type of the affixes, but um, very rarely found in uh, English language or mean major languages of the world, but only in few languages of the world. So, so far we have discussed four types of affixes, prefixes, suffixes, uh, infixes, circumfixes within the category of free uh, and bound, uh, sorry, bound morphemes. After these um, ideas of free and bound morphemes, uh, we have uh, something, I mean some issues that are related to morphemes. On and on, we will discuss certain problems that are related to this uh, branch of knowledge, morphology, certain definitions which are complicated and certain ideas which are mean having uh, certain issues. The first idea is there is the um, related to the definition of morpheme and uh, this is, uh, this ha is uh, under the tight heading of Huckles and Keeves in the book of From Kinahemus. Uh, the book name is Language, Its Nature, Psychology and Grammatical Aspect. So from that book I have taken this concept of Huckles and Keeves. And this idea actually makes it clear that how this definition of morphemes that we are accepting so far is, it creates a certain problem. Now, a morpheme, as, as uh, we defined in the beginning, that it was defined as the basic element of meaning, a phonological form that is arbitrarily united with particular meaning and that cannot be analyzed into simpler elements. So this was the definition that was proposed by the morphology. So this definition holds true mean for majority of morphemes. If, if so far we have discussed different types of morphemes and different types of words and with all those words and types of morphemes this definition was very much valid. But again there are certain words with which there are certain morphemes where we cannot I mean and I get this definition proper. Now take the example of the words like cranberry, huckleberry and bosenberry as you can see on the screen as well that these are the three different types of fruits which are named um, I mean uh, due to different reasons but if, if you look at the structure morphological structure of these words now berry part is okay because we know berry, berry is a fruit so uh, berry in uh, cranberry in huckleberry and bosenberry berry word is okay but the issue is with the initial parts. Now, cran word is also okay because we know the cran is 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 a meaningful unit. But with this huckle and bosen, we don't have any particular meaning. So, what what about these? I mean, if they, if they do not have a meaning, they do not have a, 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 they do not have a meaning. Then how we can define them as morphemes? But because morphemes, they are a smallest minimal unit with meaning according to definition of morphemes. So this, these words, they, they need a redefinition of the term morphemes because they have certain issues. Now, again, there is another problem case with the verbs in, in English language which have Latin origins. Now, look at the these words, receive. Now, sieve has a Latin origin word, deceive, conceive, and perceive. We see word has a Latin origin. Rever, uh, revert word is has a Latin origin. We have convert, we have pervert. 
Similarly, we have late, relate, collate, and translate. Again, late has a Latin origin. Reduce, deduce, conduce. Now again, the words they have the Latin origin. So mean if 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 we accept the definition of morpheme, should should these be comprised to com be composed of a single morpheme? For, mean should I say that receive is a single morpheme or receive is made up of two morphemes that is re and sieve. So similarly, deceive is a single morpheme or it is made up of two morphemes d and c. So with these words. There, there is a, a issue with respect to the definition of morpheme. Now, because we we know that the core vocabulary of English language is, is composed of the words from Anglo-Saxon origin. As you know, if you if you know the history of English language, it was basically mean uh, originated from uh, from the languages of Anglo-Saxon tribes, and later on, from Old English till the modern English, it was transformed in many ways. And then we received what we know today as modern English. But basically, because it was developed, it was evolved from Anglo-Saxon origin. So this way, we can say that there is a general tendency for core elements to be free. morphemes so we have for example the word hand and we have word like handy handly handful mishand mishandly so there are the word so we can uh, define that we can accept the definition of morpheme on these ground that because english language the morpheme definition it is okay but the issue with english language is because it uh, it is uh, it has been evolved from a different language so the, these issues arise because of that nature of english language but still Uh, we can put mean a lot of question marks now coming back again to the types of morphemes we divided morphemes into two major categories of free and bound morphemes but still we have more types yes inside these free and bound morphemes we have further categorize categorization as you can see from here that free morphemes they are further divided into two categories that are lexical and functional morphemes whereas the bound morphemes which are affixes they are divided into two categories of derivational and inflectional morphemes so now we will study these i mean sub categories of free and bound morphemes in detail now we will start with the types of free morphemes free morphemes they fall into two categories content morph uh, sorry lexical morphemes i i called it um, content because sometimes these lexical morphemes they are known as content morphemes as well and functional morphemes now from the first one uh, one is category is lexical morpheme lexical morpheme is just like the same thing as we defined uh, in a if you remember in a previous lecture of morphology the lexical words are the content words they are the set of mean ordinary nouns adjectives and verbs and almost same as content words as they carry the content of message we convey for example sincere open follow boy sad red book door um computer all of these words are content words all of these words are lexical morphemes because all of these morphemes they have a content they have a content of meaning then there are the other types of free morphemes that are uh, functional morphemes they are almost same as like the function words because they do not have um independent meanings rather they have functions inside a language they they uh, serve as function words and these are they include the set of conjunctions and prepositions articles and pronouns and examples like near in the that and but because we use them inside the language we do not have exact uh, meaning of these words morphemes but we use them as function words for example to join two sentences you use the conjunction and I went there and bought a book now and uh, in isolation does not have any meaning when i say and 
you don't get any meaning but I know as a conjunction it has a function it has a function to join uh, two nouns or two phrases or two clauses or two sentences so this way these are known as the functional morpheme so with respect to free morphemes we have two types the lexical morphemes and functional morphemes after the free morphemes we will st uh, next study the types of bound morphemes now before uh, knowing what are the two types of bound morphemes look at these two lists of words fairly faster singing opened cars rights biggest you can see that in all these words they are composed of two morphemes fair and lee mean fair a uh, lexical morpheme lee a uh, affix or a free morpheme and a bound morpheme or affix faster two morphemes are there fast a free and er is a bound morpheme and affix singing two morphemes sing root word and ing is a, a, a prefix or a suffix sorry then opened open the root word and ed is a suffix cars car the root word and s is a suffix writes write the root word s is a suffix biggest big a root word s guest is again a suffix now look at the second category say no look at i mean the second uh, column you can see the words like treatment rudeness unkind famous useless helpful irregular and reddish again all of these words are composed of two morphemes the root morphemes plus the affixes treatment treat the root morpheme and the ment is a um, affix or a um, suffix rudeness rude root word and ness is affix un a uh, prefix kind the root word famous now a uh, fame again fame f a m e fame that is a root word and o u s is again a uh, affix useless use root word less is a affix helpful help root word and a full is a affix irregular ir is a prefix and regular is a a uh, stem or root word reddish red the stem word and ish uh, dish is again a um, affix so in these two columns we have mean all nothing is, mean nothing seems uh, different because the to both list they are comprised of uh, words that are made up of two morphemes mean root morphemes and affixes and mean uh, all of them they are using some type of some type of affixes uh, with the, the root words or the base words to make Uh, double morphemes words but what is the difference no the difference is the first column that is carrying faster singing opened cars rights and biggest the all uh, uh, everywhere in with the main morpheme the root morpheme the fixes are used but the affixes do not change the word class but rather contribute to meeting grammatical constraints for example fast adjective and if i add a suffix er faster again an adjective no change of class singing sing is a verb ing is a suffix singing is again a verb no change of class opened open verb ed affix open together again a verb no change of class cars car noun as making it a plural but again cars remains a noun rights right verb as showing its tense but rights again a verb biggest big adjective est suffix biggest as again an adjective so it's showing the degree of adjective but not changing the class not changing the its part of speech so such category of affixes which do not change the class of a word are known as inflectional morpheme so all the words which were in first column they were carrying inflectional morphemes morphemes with them this was the difference now what about the words in the second list
Now, the words in the second list, they were treatment, rudeness, unkind, reddish, famous, useless, helpful, and irregular. Now, again, all these words, they have a root morpheme plus an affix. But what is different from the previous one? These affixes, they mostly change the class of the word. And normally in the case, that is like fame. Fame is a noun. But when I make famous out of it, then the class is getting changed because famous is adjective, not a noun. So all those morphemes or um, uh, bound morphemes or affixes which change the class of the morphemes, they are known as derivational morphemes. So uh, the, the bound morpheme, the derivational morpheme, they are mean related with the concept of class change. So the second list of the words in the column, they, they were compi comprised of the words having derivational morphemes. So to summarize, bound morphemes can be of two types, derivational and inflectional morphemes. Now, derivational morphemes used to make words of different grammatical category. Mean when you add a derivational morpheme, the class gets changed. If it is a noun, it becomes a verb or adjective. If it is an adjective, it becomes a noun or a verb or something like that. So, mean the class gets changed. So, su such type of morphemes, they are known as derivational morpheme. They deals with the morphemes that change the lexical category of the word they are added to. As I told you, help, help is a verb. But if I add the affix full, so helpful is adjective. So again, the class gets changed. From verb, it becomes a adjective. So it is a derivational. Full is a derivational morpheme. Similarly, kind and kind uh, and kind and kindful. So kind is adjective, kindful is a noun. So again, changing the class, so derivational morpheme. Whereas in inflectional morpheme, we, when we add them with the root morpheme, the class, the grammatical category does not change. They deal with changes that do not affect the lexical cat, uh, category of the word they apply to. For example, pluralization mean when we make plurals, when we add certain morphemes to make plurals, the class does not change. For example, uh, cat and cats. We have added a morpheme, but the class is not getting changed. So the, usually the morphemes which are used for pluralization, they are inflectional morpheme. Similarly, the tense on verbs, for example, write and writes. If I to make it uh, pres and to make use of it in a present indefinite tense, if I change it right to rights, again the class is not changing. Verb remains verb. So uh, this is an inflection morpheme. Noun case and adjectival comparison. That is degrees of adjectives: big, bigger, biggest. I'm adding uh, different types of uh, suffi uh, suffixes like are and ust with big. But again, the adjectives they remain same. So inflectional morphemes they do not change the class of morphemes. So this is these are the two major categories of bound morphemes. Now derivational versus inflectional. Some examples I have taken. Take look at the first example to make it more clear. Wicked. Wicked, I know, an adjective. If I add a suffix er with it, then the, the, the word I get is wickeder. Now, wickeder is again an adjective. And I know wickeder is the second degree of adjective, again an adjective. So, adjective remains an adjective. Look at the second word that is speak, verb. If I add ER, then again now speak becomes a speaker. Now speak was a verb, but speaker is a noun. So ER is here changing the class. So there are certain, I mean we cannot uh, fix uh, that these are the morphemes which fall in the inflectional category and we, these are the morphemes which falls in the derivational morpheme. Because there are certain morphemes which fall, mean they have function in both categories. So when the class gets changed, then uh, it is a derivational morpheme. And when the class does not get changed, it is inflectional morpheme. And, and even the same morpheme can have the two different types of functions. So this was all about derivational and inflectional morpheme. 
on the basis of different types of morphemes that we have studied so far like free bound inflectional and derivational we can have a morphological description of the sentences for example look at this sentence the girls wanted party now again on the basis of our morphological knowledge on the knowledge about the types of morphemes we can morphologically describe the sentence as the a functional morpheme girls made up of two morphemes girl and s where girl is a lexical morpheme whereas s is an inflectional morpheme wanted want is a lexical morpheme ed is a inflectional morpheme and party again a lexical morpheme so this way we can have a morphological analysis of sentences the type this this type of analysis that i was telling previously with previous example is known as item and arrangement analysis or item and arrangement morphological analysis this traditional view of morphology presented thus far is known as i a mean item and arrangement morphology the basic idea behind this i a is that meaning is achieved by stringing morphemes together when we when we may, when we combine different morphemes together then we achieve the meaning and combining their meanings for example in escape able it these are the four morphemes and when when we combine them we get a single united word with certain meaning in escapability now it has a proper meaning but the question is here is language that much simple that we can get a sentence and just can categorize in the way that this okay this is a lexical morpheme this is a inflectional morpheme this is a derivational morpheme and by having that kind of analysis can we describe language can we make meanings clear this is again a with a question mark we need to find out no items and arrangement morphology it has certain issues it has certain problem as i told you that language is not that much simple and if it is simple let's pretend then meaning in language is nothing more than the combination of meaningful bits it means that by get, getting the meanings of morpheme we can get the meanings of the language and what are the meanings associated with those bits for example now the confusion is there yes most of the time by getting the meanings of those bits i can get the meaning of the word but look look at the word like bibliography if i say that biblio is from the word biblical and graphy is from the word graphical then bibliography is means holy graphic is that possible no so i am not getting the meaning of that word from its chunks so it means there is a problem with this perspective of morphology there are mean there are some more theoretical problems like fish now fish is a singular fish is a plural where is the plural morpheme because we know that cat is added with the s morpheme to make a cats so s is a plural morpheme but why not we are using any plural morpheme to make fish into a plural morpheme then uh, the people they come up with the idea of I mean the morphologists they come up with the idea of zero morpheme according to them that with these type of morphemes we have zero morphemes and when we add them zero morphemes to the fish then we get we get uh, actually fish as plural morpheme because with plural morpheme zero morpheme is has been added but I mean but again there is a question how do we know it's a suffix I mean how do i know that a word sheep is written there and whether it is a singular morpheme whether it is a, a written morpheme because i cannot uh, by looking at it word sheep i cannot get whether uh, cannot get an image of zero morpheme so it would be hard to tell uh, that where, what type of morpheme is this as we are discussing the uh, problems with uh, item and arrangement morphology there are some more theoretical problems uh, like take present tense took past tense
how do you add something to uh, take to cause its vowel to change because according to morpheme concept according to morphological concept the they they, they should be if this is take the past tense should be taked but how this irregularity we can define with respect to morphology again they they have certain idea of zero or vowel change form but that they they they, they have a cha vowel change because of certain morphological function but again the question remains a question and even more theoretical problems that i have discussed previously under the heading of huckel and keys that berry a fruit a free morpheme blueberry a compound morpheme but what about cranberry what about huckleberry because are they compound morphemes or they are a single morpheme mean we we do not get any idea because if we accept uh, cranberry composed of two morphemes because berry is a single individual a meaningful morpheme then what about cran because we don't have any word for cran so these are some of the theoretical problems with uh, items and arrangement morphological analysis now um, these problems are there some of these problems uh, they are still mean um, under question mark they are uh, different linguists they are working on it certain uh, mean alternative solutions are provided uh, some one of the uh, um, latest idea that is provided is of wp and uh, conlanging and another idea that is provided is morphophonemic alternations mean the, these are the latest uh, branches of morphology that are working to solve these uh, issues that uh, to solve the problems with items and arrangement morphology so if you want to get the details of these mean latest uh, morphological alternations you can have your mean uh, further you can have extended studies so, but it's beyond our, sc our scope of our level so we won't uh, get into them rather we will mean uh, revert ourselves back towards the morphology now coming back to morphology there is another concept that is quite popular that is idea of morphs and allomorphs morphs what are morphs morphs are the actual forms used to realize morphemes just like phones for phonemes mean in phon uh, phonology we studied that there are phones and phonemes similarly in morphology we there are morphs and morphemes for example in cat has one morph and one morpheme but inside morpheme cat if i say cats now these cats morpheme two morphemes are there cat and sa and this individual morpheme it is also known as morph morph and morpheme the main I mean it is almost the same thing morph and morpheme over here now what are the allomorphs that allomorphs are mostly related to oral language not about the written language they are the single morphemes with more than phonological realization what are these phonological realization and what are these allomorphs um, if you um, i will make it clear with the help of examples once again if you take the example of when i say something and when he says something now by adding sa sound i am getting za sound so what is this this kind of uh, variation is known as allomorphs for example play i add an s morpheme and get place but why don't i call it place in written form it is just like cats sa why not it is place rather it oral form it is plays so the, this za variation is allomorph similarly test and if i make a past tense t e s t e d adding an ed morpheme then i get tested why not i i say it like played tested but i what i i i say it id so this this kind of variation is known as allomorphs so uh, finally aspects of morphology uh, in different books uh, uh, because these lexical and derivational morphemes under the, uh, the headings of free and bound morphemes they are individually described as aspects of morphology so if you see somewhere what are the aspects of morphology i have re-added these things that there are three aspects of morphology inflectional derivational and compounding 
inflectional and derivational the same that we have discussed under the headings of bound morphemes but compounding this is uh, that we haven't uh, touched so far compounding is when two or more words are joined together the same way I mean we make compound nouns or we get phrasal verb this is this this process is known in morphology as compounding I mean joining two words and making a compound word for example sociolinguistics now socio and linguistic combination of two words so it is a compounding process bedroom compound noun bed and room book review compound noun book and review playground compound noun play and ground so this this is the third aspect of uh, morphology that is often de dealt in different books on morphology so what we have studied today yes we have studied with respect to morphology today what the morphemes types are mean what are the free and bound morphemes yes free morphemes that can exist independently and bound morphemes that do not exist independently because they in isolation they don't have a meaning then we further define the types of free morphemes as lexical and functional morphemes lexical morphemes which have mean meanings which have some contents and usually the verbs adjectives and nouns and functional morphemes usually they have certain functions but they do not have any meaning in isolation like the conjunctions pronouns and prepositions after that we discussed bound morphemes types that were inflectional and derivational morphemes inflectional morphemes the types of suffixes uh, affixes that when added to the free morphemes do not change the class of the morphemes are known as inflectional morphemes and those morphemes which change the class of bound uh, that free morphemes are known as derivational morphemes and then with the help of these different types of morphemes we uh, reach to item and arrangement morphological description we describe that how with the help of this uh, morphological knowledge we can describe or we can uh, uh, morphologically analyze sentences but again there were certain problem with this item and arrangement morphology that mean there was an issue of zero morphemes there was an issue of the compound morphemes where we, uh, there were the certain morphemes which we do which uh, which were considered as could be considered as morphemes but they were not having any meanings so we would uh, we also had certain uh, problems with the definitions of morpheme but you know in uh, different uh, areas of knowledge i mean improvements are already there and uh, they, they the room for improvement is always open and we we have a lot of question marks but i we hope for the solutions as well and finally we dealt with the aspects of morphology the way it is dealt in the different books as inflectional morphology derivational morphology and compound morphology so i hope this lecture would help you to learn a, a lot about uh, morphology so see you next week inshallah and uh, with uh, more knowledge about another level of language so till that allah hafiz